This season, we promised lessons on creating today's heirlooms, but sometimes the best place to start is with color. And today's featured guest is author and designer Erin Price Hintz. Erin writes a blog and she uses color palettes each month to challenge people to kind of step outside their zone. Welcome, Erin. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Katie. Oh, yeah, it's a pleasure. I'm glad you're here. And you know what? A lot of people get really inspired by the color of beads, and that's kind of what draws them in in the first place, but then they feel overwhelmed. That's you know? true. When, so let's give them some tips. That's right. When, well, when I go to the store, I get very overwhelmed by all those beads on the wall, and luckily they're all in color, but sometimes knowing what colors to combine with other colors is where I get a little bit tripped up. So there's lots of places that you can find color palettes. One of my favorite places is to go online. There's lots of color generating sites. You can just type in color palette generator and you can find all sorts of different color palettes available already pre-made that people have put together for you. Party planning sites, wedding sites, those are really great places to look for color palettes that might work in jewelry. Yeah, and of course everyone has a favorite palette, but this is a great way to kind of stretch outside your comfort zone colors. That's true, that's true. I also like to go to the hardware store and look at paint chips because sometimes they put together rooms with different colors of palettes and that's a good place to start as well. And there are lots of books and other things online that you can uh, certainly access to find different color palettes that might work for you. Well, let's talk a little bit about when you go to the store. Okay. What are you looking for? All right. Well, I, I have this color palette here that I picked up from an online site. It was a party planning site. And I liked sort of the modern color palette in there that had a little bit of a retro vibe. So what I would do is I would actually print this off and take this with me to the store, to the wall of beads, and start matching beads from there. Okay. Or you could also take along a book. You I have could. a couple of great inspi inspiring color books there, I too. I do. I have a, a color book right here that has also some great palettes and this particular one is also available online so sometimes I just take my phone with me and I just bring it up on my phone and walk into my local store and I can do it that way as well. Great. Okay well let's take a let's take a look over here. Okay. All right so the first thing that I would do is maybe start with sort of a a bead that would be sort of a focal bead and in this case since there's a lot of blue in this palette I would want to start with maybe the blue beads. So I, I kind of draw into this particular bead. I like the shape, the rondelle shape of that. And I also like that there's these little silver spacers that go on that. And there's some other ones that are kind of similar to that. So I might grab a few that are in a similar shape, like this rondelle shape. Okay. okay. I'll take those off and we'll take All them right. back to the bench with us. All right. And then I would also uh, take a look at some other uh, shades. It's not necessarily the exact shade of orange on here, but that gives you the same kind of color value. So I would... I would select one of those as well. And I'll give you that right, to hold. Sure. And then um, yellow is a really hard color for me to work with. I don't know if it is for other people, but um, sometimes everyone has a, a color that's kind of their foil. And yellow is a tough one for me. So what I normally do is I look at that as more of a metal tone than an actual color. So in this case, since it's yellow, I would stick with more of a golden tone bead. Okay, so then you might mix some gold together with your silver here. Correct. Nice. So I found a little gold bead right over here, and I would bring that. Okay. Okay. I'll bring those too. Sure. All right. So let's take a look at these now, and we can talk about how you're going to mix some different shapes. Right. So basically, what I would do is sort of uh, plan them out on on a bead board of some sort, and take a look at. Uh, the patterning, I like the rondelle shape here and the rondelle shape that's with this, but also mixing that with the different shapes of the round or maybe a flat shape or something like that. And sort of, I can kind of start to see a pattern emerging there right. and how I might want to um, incorporate that. So these little gold beads might just be an accent bead in between the silver. So you're bringing in another metal tone, but also another color. Yeah, now, th now that you have these home, you can also kind of look at them and see, you know, is something missing here? Do I need something right. smaller, something bigger? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I might actually want to go back and get a another orange tone, maybe a lighter orange in this case, so that I don't have all of the same colors, or maybe a darker blue, so that I can kind of work within the tones of that. Even though that's not exactly what's on this particular palette, it just kind of works within the, yeah. within the whole scheme of things. It's a jumping off point. It is a jumping off point. But I think that if you look at um, especially the um, the colors, uh, the metals as colors instead of just as yellow. Yeah, that's yellow. a really great tip. Yeah, so if you have a lot of gray in your palette, you might want to look at that as silver. If you had a lot of darker colors like black, you might look at that as more of a gunmetal kind of tone. Right. Uh, it doesn't have to be just that, that flat color. 
That makes sense. Right. So. Yeah, let's take a look at these palette, this palette too, with these pieces of jewelry. Yes. I think this is a wonderful example of how these on this bracelet, for example, bring in the different shapes and textures into the piece. Exactly. I like that there is um, everything from faceted to this very flat, uh, sort of frosted look to this. Uh, the gold that's in this palette sort of warms this up a little bit. And then you have the rounds in several different sizes. And so that uh, makes a little bit more visual interest than if all of the beads were the exact same size and shape. Right. So mixing those shapes is what really makes this successful. And with the color palette challenges that I do every month, the whole idea is that you can use that same color palette to create different looks. This is a, a completely different look over here on this neck that has those same colors in it in a completely different way. But again, you have the faceted and you have the round and you have different shapes and sizes so it makes it a little bit more visually interesting. Right, and you can see that it, it's not necessarily using all the colors in the palette. Correct. You know, Correct. but you're just drawing out the ones that speak to you, I guess. Right, exactly. Yeah. And let's talk a little bit about your bracelet too because that's another example of using the color palette. Yes, okay, so this actually is was inspired by this particular color palette. And so when I was looking for the beads, I wanted to make sure that I had uh, that orange and that yellow represented. Again, I used the gold as my yellow in the, in the piece. And I also wanted to use variations of the blue. So I have a much darker blue and a much lighter blue as well. So that gives it a little bit more visual interest. Yeah, it creates a lot of texture and kind of some contrast there too. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Well, when we come back, we're going to learn how to make that bracelet. Um, do you have any other, what are, would you say are your top three tips for choosing color? Uh, my top three tips are for choosing color. I would say the first one is find colors that you love, that you love to live in. If blue is your color and you're always wearing blue, then that is a really good place to start because there are lots of different variations of blue from turquoise to navy and you can certainly find something within there to work with almost anything that you create. The next tip I would say is to select some contrasting colors that go with that. Blue great, looks great with orange or kind of those rusty red tones and you can certainly pair that in a lot of different shades. And uh, the third one is don't be afraid of color. Go for those colors that you think are really a challenge for you. Uh, a few years ago when I started doing the color palettes it was because I couldn't use the color orange. And now I am never shy away from orange. I use it a lot because I had a, a wall built up with using a color, and once I started using it and finding different ways to use that color, it opened things up for me. Oh, definitely, and there are some, then you have a go-to also. You know, there are so many different ways that you can combine it.